So my name is Mark Lithgow, I'm Professor of Biomedical Imaging here at University College London and I'm Director of the Centre for Advanced Biomedical Imaging. I think for me one of the, perhaps one of the most remarkable aspects is we are right in the heart of London. Only two or three hundred metres away are all the shoppers coming up and down Tottenham Court Road. Yet here we have one of the most advanced experimental imaging centres that goes completely unnoticed, where we're able to bring lots of different imaging modalities together to crack what I think are some of the most taxing and difficult biological and medical problems we have at this moment in time. With 50 people in the department, it would take me probably a couple of hours to go through all the projects. But if I can pick perhaps some of my favourites, and not because these are the hardest, they're just some that I've enjoyed over the years. The first one is called magnetic targeting. And one of the first things that we did when we came to CABE was to try to image individual cells. You inject cells and try to use MRI to track them around the body and we were able to put little iron oxide particles in them. And that project went fine. What we thought at the time was maybe if you put iron oxide particles into cells, maybe you could make them magnetic. And then maybe we could use the MRI scanner, instead of for imaging, maybe to actually grab the particles and the cells and steer them to sites of, low, sites of injury. And that's what we've been doing. We're able to now inject cells with these tiny iron oxide particles in and magnetise and then we're able to use the MRI scanner to image where we want them to go, let's say to, to the prostate or to the lungs and then guide them to those locations using the MRI scanner and that gets you thinking about imaging in a completely different way, not just as an imaging tool but now as an interventional stroke surgical tool and I like that just because it twisted the imaging around for me again. It was just a different way of thinking about an old problem that we had. The other two projects that I like are, are more recent. Uh, one, because MRI isn't particularly sensitive, is the truth of it, and it's not very good at looking at individual molecules. So it's always a challenge for us. It's very good at structure and function to some degree. And it was Simon Walker Samuel um, came up with a technique called glucosest where quite simply, we were, if we think of it in terms of patients, we're able to give patients a bottle of Lucozaid, we're able to sensitise the MRI scanner to the glucose in that Lucozaid. And because tumours readily take up glucose, the tumours light up on the MRI scanner just by sensitising the MRI scanner to the glucose mo molecules. So it allows us to see those very subtle molecular processes that we certainly weren't able to get a handle on you know 10 or 15 years ago and also we're able to create a map of that across the tumour and the nice thing about that technique is we developed it here and then we were able to translate it across to the hospital and within about two or three weeks of finishing the project here we tried the first patients out and that's lovely when you see the techniques the MRI techniques moved to the hospital straight away and one of the big advantages of MRI. The other significant challenge that we have is cell tracking. There's a lot of interest in regenerative medicine and within regenerative medicine there is a, a T cell problem, let's call it. And people use T cells, certainly here at the Cancer Institute, to try to target tumours and then use the T cells to eat the tumours up, they use them as a therapy and they wanted to track the tumours as they go to brain tumours. And we've been genetically modifying the cells so that when you put the cells inside that they then suck up or take up a nuclear, a radioactive isotope and then they light up and give out the radioactivity and we can get a, a three-dimensional map by looking at the distribution of the cells. Now traditionally, imaging used to live in medical physics departments and it was physicists working on them. But now we're seeing biologists, cell biologists, developmental biologists looking at the, the cellular processes of cells and it's those are the advances that are really 
enabling imaging to move on in a way that we haven't thought of, partly because we're interacting with disciplines again that wouldn't have normally come into an imaging department.